here's one. I think this is probably your, yours, Michael. How can the uh, transit-oriented development at Dick Center, which is right across the street there, incorporate a teacher's village rather than so much office space? <laughs> yeah, that, that's 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 a long conversation. I mean, there is there is housing planned um, on that on that site, so or at least the developer is proposing housing on that site, so that could be teacher housing. I I think I don't know if this, I have something to say. Actually, it's kind of food for thought. I don't know if this is time. So. I just, so we have this general plan, right? This general plan 2040 that was approved in 2011. And so San Jose, as I think most of you know, um, is a single family city. Yellow is single family land use. And if you look at a land use map of San Jose, it is almost entirely yellow. You can't really even see any other colors. And then what we did is with the urban village concept is we um, we defined urban villages which are primarily these commercial corridors often on good transit and I would say there was this kind of grand bargain that happened with the general plan update and that was so before the general plan was approved in 2011 there was a lot of um, missing middle type of housing starting to happen people were buying up single-family lots tearing down the houses and combining them and putting in townhomes or slightly me medium density dwelling. One of the grand bargains that happened with the general plan update is like, listen, we're going to preserve the single family neighborhoods. You can't touch them. They're off limits. In exchange, we're going to go really high density on the, on the, on the urban villages, you know, seven stories, in some cases more. And that was sort of the grand bargain. One of the challenges that, that we've had is there isn't a lot of room left for that missing housing, middle housing type anymore. ADUs is a solution. But, but I mean, I think we're at best thinking we're going to get about 200 of those a year. That's not going to solve teacher housing or any other housing crisis. It'll definitely be part of the puzzle. So I mean, that's kind of the general plan now. But as we go forward and we visit this general plan, I think there needs to be some thought about thinking about are there opportunities for that sort of in between density where you might, you know, areas of the city that might even be single family or transitional areas where you could allow sort of slight intensification with higher densities, townhomes, court homes, you know, duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, the type of development that essentially you can't do anymore. The other real problem, I think, with affordability for teachers and everyone is you have two choices in the city right now. You can buy a home for $2.5 million, $2 million, and you can live in an older apartment for too much money or a new executive apartment that was just built for outrageous prices and you need to share a bedroom, especially if you're a teacher. And I think the other thing, and, and so part of this missing middle is that high density stuff is very expensive to build. It's very expensive to build. You need outrageous rents to be able to build it. The stuff that's the medium density is more affordable to build. You don't have to hit the high rents just to get it financed. The other issue related to this is that nobody's building for sale products. So again, you could buy a house or you can live in an apartment. There's no condos being built in this town. And that is in part because of the, the, the idiosyncrasies of, of condo development and how that works. Um, even though the prices are really high, they have to be really, really high for, for the global financiers to invest in condo development. So it is, again, getting back to that need to have lower, you know, that mid middle density where people will build condos. Because I think, and apartments, and I think, you know, teachers, I think it's great if they can rent a, an affordable apartment, but at some point I think they're going to want to own a piece of this valley or they're probably going to leave. Another program that the city has is our inclusionary housing program for, for sale. And if we could build the for sale, we have an inclusionary housing program where 50% um, of the units have to be affordable and well, and we just had it. So urban planners kind of fit in this teacher category <laughs> of income. And so we just had an urban planner in our office. That there's very few of these units available, but she found one in East San Jose and she was able to buy with a, a, a home buyer assistance program through the city, a um, one of these inclusionary affordable housing for sale products and she bought one. So I mean, I think that's something to just kind of think about. So as we're going forward, and we have the plan that we have now, but as we revisit it in years to come, be thinking about how can we get, how can we create space for that middle density, not just the high density, and not just preserving the very, very low density that we have that is really most of, of the city. So that's just something I want to throw out there for people to think about for future conversations.